We have woken up in the most beautiful place. Uh, but I've woken up in a terrible mood. Um, feeling quite stressed. While we have been meeting up with friends and stuff, it's been really nice. But the videos have got a bit behind, so I'm trying to play catch up. I'm trying to edit like two vlogs a day, um, which is really tough. It's like a lot of work, as well as trying to like organize where we're going, traveling around, filming the next vlog. Um, and it just feels like a lot at the moment. We've also, since we've been in Norway, we've been meeting up with people and it's been for like days at a time. So it's been quite uh, intense socialising. Um, we've actually got plans that we're meant to meet up with one of my sister's friends this afternoon and then meet up with Dave and Becca again tomorrow. And we had loads of amazing adventures planned. We were going to cycle up Troll Tonga, which is this crazy pass. And we were going to kayak through Garanga Fjord. But we're just feeling a bit like burnt out and tired. So I think we're going to cancel all our plans which is a shame, because they sound really fun. We feel a bit like we can't just run away into the, uh, uh, like drive away up north and go explore wherever we want on our own schedule, because we're kind of working around these other plans we've made. And actually it doesn't really feel good. And I think you've got to trust your instincts. <sighs> trying to get rid of the deep swirling pit of guilt and anxiety in my stomach. <laughs> and trying to cheer Tom up too. <laughs> One of the things that we've been finding a bit difficult is that since we've been in Norway, We've pretty much spent all our time with people and that just means a bit more planning, a bit more organising. And one of the things we really love about living in the van is how spontaneous it is. When we rock up somewhere, we don't know anything about the place, we discover it. And at the moment it can sometimes feel a bit like we're being shown around. Um, so it'd be really nice to go and explore and discover stuff for ourselves. Uh, not that we haven't loved spending time with our friends, it's been really nice. And hopefully we'll see them all again very soon. Oh, so this morning's funk, we just need to get rid of it and start fresh. So we're going in the water. I'm not looking forward to this. But the water's so beautiful. It's green, like wind bar. <laughs> We have been driving up onto the mountain pass. It's so bright here, there's so much snow. It's a bit of a sore subject, sunglasses, because I actually bought Tom a pair of sunglasses for his birthday. They're prescription sunglasses that clip on to your normal glasses. But um, they arrived two hours after we left Lars's house because they said they weren't going to arrive for ages. Um, but then they arrived two hours later. And then I found out yesterday that I had to pay £80 in custom tax. So that was half of the worth of the glasses themselves. The visibility is pretty shocking today, um, which is a shame because we are going to Galanga, which is a really beautiful fjord. Um, I guess we'll see when we get there. Oh, we've just come out of the cloud. We've got our first little view of Garanga. Um, we can't see too far into the fjord, but what we can see is stunning. Um, wow. And like the scale of it, it looks quite small. And then you see this huge cruise ship in the middle and it looks like a little toy boat. <laughs> I'm gonna make lunch with this amazing view because we're so hungry. I'm just gonna cook up the leftovers from last night and bulk it out so it makes more pasta and just extra, extra sauce. in Garanga. <laughs> Here we are in Garanga. It's 
I feel like it would be more spectacular if the clouds lift, but it's really beautiful. I think what we'll do is do the short waterfall walk, just not point two kilometers. I had to go out there, the camera was getting pretty wet, as you can see by my glasses. <laughs> The old hydropower station. It's actually closed down now. It was built in 1907 for the hotelier that was owned this hotel just behind me here and wanted to get some power to keep up to date with his competitors. Um, it's actually shut down in the 1970s but it's quite cool to still see it completely abandoned. You, if you peer inside you can see some of the um, infrastructure to create that hydropower. So we're trying to see this viewpoint, but um, there's three massive tour buses and they park right across the car park. Yeah, it looks like you can. Well, you can see why we decided to wait in the car for a bit. It's so busy. Well, yeah, because it's almost like the kind of thing you want to be able to have it to yourself a little bit when you're over there. So it's definitely worth waiting just a couple of minutes because now I've just got the completely the place to myself. It was just really busy at that moment. We were just timed it wrong because the tour buses arrived just as we arrived. It's incredible up here. So if you're wondering, how did these fjords get created. How are these amazing landscapes possible and why do they exist here in Norway? Well, it's all to do with a glacier. So the ice ages started about 2.6 million years ago and due to where Norway sits, <laughs> Tom's laughing at me. Sorry guys, as I was saying, saying until I got really interrupted by Tom, the glaciers were moving across the land and they were picking up like underneath them the sand, the dirt, the earth was all freezing. This was creating like a sandpaper effect on the landscape. So it was all grinding, 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 grinding down these bits of mountains and causing this shape to be created. <laughs> if you're wild camping like us in Norway, it's great. There's bins everywhere and there's also toilets everywhere. Um, we've noticed them on the side of the road. We haven't really used them much, but if you don't have a toilet in your van, it's ideal here. There's toilets in most laybys and picnic spots. Also, there's loads of campervan service areas. We've drive through most towns and they have a sign for a free campervan service area. And that's actually our next stop, guys. Come with us. Yeah, like I was saying, you just see these signs along the road all the time for services, so that's good. We really need to get water to run out. Woohoo! Guys, Tom's just picked the best park up. It's got its own toilet and it's got its own beach, and we're the only ones here. Hell yeah! Nice one, Tommy. It's the sun now. Yeah. We were just saying about the weather here. We were, we are quite surprised. We thought it would be fun. We thought it'd be fine and sunny in June, yeah. but it's well not even sunny, but just warmer. Can't believe how I much snow like there spring, is. Like a springtime. Like I've seen pictures of Norway with like wildflowers all blooming and stuff, and I thought, oh, that'd be lovely. We would go <laughs> to see like Norway in spring, but um, this is definitely quite wintry. So there's three Iron Age. Burial mounds here, can you believe it? Mm. 
This is the classic. What we do when we get to a park up, we try and find our flat spot. I try this and get. I try and get this. This is, yeah, <laughs> is a classic when we get to a park up. Isabel says this is a classic when we get to a park up, and then I cut it out. So she does it every single time. <laughs> yeah, guys. There's a lot that doesn't get into these vlogs, so uh, yeah, there's been a few things I'll have to repeat. Thumbs up if you want to hear the story about <laughs> running out of gas. Thumbs up if you want to hear the story about me ordering Tom's present and it arriving late. Thumbs up if you want to hear the story about Tom leaving his trainers at Lars. <laughs>